Today I wanted to share a transplantation experiment with Phlox drummondii. I have a couple of color variations from white to some slighter like pinkish hues to a really vibrant red. I got these in a sandy loam soil along the roadside and I placed them in pots, a couple of pots with soil of their own. Yep around their own root zone. And I left them in there. I watered them, um, let the water soak through, down through the bottom of the pot. And then I left them outside on the porch overnight and they were perky. And these are, by the way, I picked these out of the ground bare root. I grabbed down at the base of the stem and because it was a nice sandy loam, I was able to pull it straight up. Of course, your small fibrous roots were removed in the process. And the plant uh, went under a, like a shock cycle or a shock response. And so now what I did was I got a, 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 knife, um, a, a knife shovel tool and I just created a space in the soil and plugged the, the main root straight down in the soil. And then I compressed the soil so there's good soil root contact and there's plenty of moisture in the soil. So I'm... Um, I'm not too worried about it. And you can see here uh, that these are, oh, thank you, James. <laughs> that these are um, still perky, right? These are an annual plant that are um, high in fecundity. They, they produce large uh, seed yields and um, they wanna grow. They wanna survive. They wanna get to the point where they're reseeding before they conclude their life cycle. That's right, so, we were just talking about that. That's right. And so uh, these plants wanna survive uh, for as dainty as they appear, they're awfully hardy. Yep. And so this um, is the before of the Phlox drummondii. And here in just a moment, we'll see what the after looks like. All right, so this is eight hours after transplant and uh, they got a little bit of water, but didn't give them a huge soak. And um, today was a little warmer than normal. It was uh, in the 80s uh, with clear skies. Sun was right overhead. So, you know, for having been ripped out of the ground, bare root, no soil, held in a container overnight, and then plopped straight in the ground, I think these are gonna make it. At least some of them will. And if they go to seed next year, there will be a ton of Phlox trimundii in the yard. So, that's pretty cool. This is the next morning. Look at that. They're kind of perky. I went ahead and came in with some um, clippers and just removed some of the droopy uh, flowers that were not looking so great. And what I did was I just, I just cut it below the bloom to the joint. And uh, generally what will happen, oh, look at that, hello little slug generally what will happen when you cut it down below the bloom to the next joint is the plant will compensate by producing more more shoots to produce more blooms because the whole the whole concept here is they're trying to reproduce before the end of their life cycle so Yes, if you want more blooms, that's called deadheading, by the way. I'm sure if you're watching this still, you probably already know that. <laughs> Unless you're super bored and you're like, whoa. I'm just going to keep watching this. But anyway, so look at that. You can successfully transplant Phlox drummondii. Isn't that awesome? And again, again, I just, at, these were in a sandy clay loam. This is the soil um, composition here that 
they came from, like I said, I packed these in soil so they wouldn't dry out. And I, and I just literally came up to the base and slowly pulled it out, bare root. These things are not that delicate, are they? Gosh, and they're beautiful. And you get a whole bunch of them together, I bet they smell wonderful. So. My hope is that next year all of this is just thick with Flax for Monday Eye. I'll post an update video next year. I think it'll be good. Okay. Well, so cheers. Next time you see a giant patch of Flax for Monday Eye and you don't have them in your garden, you can pop a few of these in there. That's going to be awesome.